Hello, not manly here, and welcome back to Purple Space Program, where Fluid Dynamics has asked us to do what I like to call a snipe hunt. That's where a contract comes up that says, go check out some disturbance near some craft with some piece of instrument, and then they tell you that's not the source of the disturbance, and then you gotta go somewhere else, 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 gotta go somewhere else until the contract decides you've had enough, and then finally says, okay, you found it. What we've got here is a seismic disturbance uh, snipe hunt here on Gilly, and we've got the craft right here to go and investigate it. This is the Gilly base, commanded by Natlorf Kerman, a level 2 engineer. So what we're doing is we're going to go fly off here. We've harvested enough ore, we could make enough fuel just to be able to do a couple of short hops on Gilly's surface here. And we're heading out to that seismic location out there. I've got the thrust on this poodle liquid fuel engine turned down to practically nothing because this engine is overkill on Gilly and why use up the fuel? There we go, we are adjusting our uh, path there so that our surface prograde is headed towards that navigational point there and we got a beautiful eve sunrise there. So we come over the point where it tells us that we are in that area and Natlorf comes to a complete stop above the surface and comes to a gentle landing directly above it. At least I hope it's gentle. Come on Natlorf, there we go. So go ahead, do a seismic survey there. That is not the source of the seismic disturbances. Go to the next location. So what it does is it makes another nav point and it makes it your active nav point and that's where you get to go next. Up we go and we go try again. But we still get funds for each of these locations so they're not bad. It's not like a total waste of time. You get some funds, some science and some reputation for getting to these areas. Come on, gotta settle down before we can do the seismic circuit. There we go. Delta, that is the fourth one and we haven't found it. We need to take a break though, we're running a little low on fuel here. So we do some mining here. Looks like the lowlands is also good for some ore, that's good. After a few more bits of mining, we think we go out to the next one. Look out for that boulder there on the side there, Natalorf. Fortunately, the boulders by default are not material objects and you can land through them. But Natalorf's a better pilot than that, even if she is only an engineer. Look at that, that's the last one. We have located the source of the disturbances and it only took five or so waypoints. Look at that. Not bad for just a little bit of time wasting there. In the meantime, we have got our Gilly Amusements tourists coming back from the surface of Gilly. And it was right here that I realized, wait a minute, if I separate this command pod and bring these guys through the atmosphere, I'm not going to have any control. These are all tourists. They are not trained pilots. They are not engineers. They are not scientists. They cannot control this craft. So all I can really do here is point this thing retrograde and turn off SAS right before I detach. And hope to heck that when we la when we get this thing down, we can somehow deploy that parachute. Well, I think, well, here we go. Nothing more we can do here. If something else goes wrong, I, I can try something else because I got the game saved further higher up. The only one who could really do anything right now was Hilbel Kerman down there. She's on the bottom there where all the pilot controls are. The pilot controls are currently locked because Mission Control has got this as a tourist craft and they don't want tourists fiddling with the controls. Okay, SAS off and detach and hope that we can do something about this when we get low enough in the atmosphere. Once again, Eve's very thick, very dense atmosphere grips hold and takes apart that service module. And we're going to get a bit of a fireworks show. There they go. Uh oh. 
Your heart is not too impressed. Oh, now he's happy there. All the explosions are happening away from his pod. There we are. And this is a gorgeous re-entry. Look at that. We're pulling Mach 20 <laughs> as we enter the atmosphere. We're jostling a little bit. We're kind of going back and forth and back and forth, but that's okay. This pod is aerodynamically stable in one direction. As, not, as long as we're not trying to force the controls, it should stay oriented in that direction until it comes to a complete stop. Hopefully it doesn't come to a complete stop at, at any faster than say about 5 meters per second. When we swing around for our second re-entry pass, our orientation is awful. Look at that, we're coming side on. But that pod, the heaviest part being on the bottom, has got no problem reorienting itself without any control. The only thing I noticed is we've got some temperature gauges that flash up a little bit. Now mission control cannot communicate with this pod right now to tell the tourists, hey, you need to do something for us. But wait till we get low enough and this plasma trail stops. Uh oh, here we go. Thick atmosphere. Oh, only five and a half G's. These guys can handle that. Look at that. No problem. Now that the plasma trail has lightened up, Mission Control tries to send a message out. Hey, Gilly Amusements, uh, we need to do something. We need to do. <laughs> They're flubbing away on the mic. Gilly Amusements, we need you guys to do something. Uh, Hillbill says, okay, what do you need us to do and why? Well, if you don't do this, you're going to call crash and die. So pay attention. Okay, take a look somewhere on that console for a very large button. That very large button says space. It should look like a bar about, oh, about, about, oh, 10 centimeters wide. Hillbill says, you mean this bar here that says space? He says, yeah, that bar right there. Okay, uh, right about now, hit that, hit that bar, hit it, hit it. Hilbo says, it's not doing anything. And Gene says, no, keep hitting it, keep hitting it. It's like, Hilbo's like, okay, I keep hitting it. Hitting, 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 oh, okay, something happened, something turned light up. There. Okay, Gene says, there you go, okay, that parachute is open, okay, you guys are not going to crash, you're going to land safe. Hilpo says, thank goodness, what the heck are you trying to get us to do over there at Mission Control? You're going to make us... <laughs> My goodness. Giving us the thrill of our lives and not killing us. <laughs> Fortunately, that parachute opens up without any control, and I'm not entirely sure how that works. But hey, I don't care as long as these guys come home safe. Hilpo Kerman saves the day. And we come to a gentle landing up in what looks like the highlands. No problem there. Touchdown. And we recover the first three of our big collection of tourists. There we go. But we got another collection of tourists up there. We gotta go recover them yet. And here they are. Tramie Kerman is sitting in the hot seat in this case. I'm gonna try something a little different this time. I've got the parachute uh, uh, set to deploy at about 0.5 atmospheres. Also, I'm going to arm that chute at the exact same time as I detach. Although I'm a little slow here and we're already in the atmosphere by the time I get around to doing that. Oh, get that thing turned around, turned around, turned around. Oh. Okay, we got them separated and it's pointing in the right direction. The only thing is, will it stay there? The ladies are hanging on for dear lives, but I think that's going to work. There's just one problem, for some reason this craft is not holding orientation right on retrograde like it's supposed to be. It isn't even oscillating back and forth like it did before. In fact, uh oh, we've got a temperature gauge up on that pod. We don't want the pod to explode. No, 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 uh oh, if it's not the heat, it'll be the G-forces. We're already at six, seven. Uh, 7 G's, 8 G's, what are we doing? Why are we hitting the lower atmosphere so quickly? And why are G-forces hitting 10 G's? Oh no, what are we gonna do? Oh, and the ladies have all passed out. Well, that didn't work out so hot. If they pass out, they can't pay their fares. Oh my goodness. 
Looks like we'll have to try again. Fortunately, I had that saved up there again. So we'll try the same thing. This time, I have to remember to turn SAS off before we detach and also not have that service module directly in front of us. We don't want it colliding back into us. So ever so slightly off from retrograde. Turn SAS off and detach. That should clear that service module away and give this capsule a chance to orient itself when it hits the atmosphere. And that looks like it's working out a lot better. There we go. Whew, thank goodness for that. I was wondering what the heck. The rest of this re-entry turned out to be rather uneventful, so no problem, we'll just quickly fast forward through this at four times regular speed. Good thing Tramie Kerman didn't have to do anything, she would have had no clue what the heck to do with a space bar of all things, thinking maybe he would open the door and send her into space. That parachute is still armed, but it shouldn't try to deploy until we get low enough in the atmosphere. One last swing around Eve, ladies. Take a good look. It might be a while before you get to come back up here again. Once again, we hit the atmosphere at a pretty odd angle, but don't worry, this craft will reorient itself. There we go. A little bit of bouncing back and forth, but we should be okay. I was worried there because I saw temperature gauges flashing at one point, thinking, oh, we can lose that parachute. But nope, no, nope, we've managed to send ourselves before the worst of the air hits. Well, that was a bit of an adventure. We'll need to figure out some way of putting some kind of... Uh, pro body on here or maybe even bring a pilot along on the next tourist run up to Gilly. But fortunately this gets settled out without any trouble. We should drop down and that parachute should open up. Looks like it's safe to deploy as soon as it figures out what 0.5 max pressure is. These tourist contracts have proven to be very, very lucrative. Maybe there's a balance problem with uh, this game here, where it's still Gilly and it's still the very next object, but for some reason, because it's Gilly, it's worth a lot more funds and a lot more science. I don't know. We'll have to take a look at that later on. But hey, even though we have maxed out the science from Gilly, it seems like we've got an opportunity to earn lots and lots of funds with contracts related to Gilly. So hey, we'll take that. And the ladies here will come home safe without any control over that Mark 1 2 pod. There we go. And that at least completes Mark Thrym's contract. We'll finish the rest of them on the next episode. Until then, I'm not manly. Fly safe.